Today, there are 5.5 trillion revenue passenger kilometers, a, a passenger flying one kilometer and paying for that. It'll grow to about 14 trillion in 20 years, according to our forecast, which, by the way, is not that dissimilar from other industry forecasts. That's two and a half times larger. Now, today, we've got about 16,000 passenger aircraft, and that'll double. Then we've got 28,000 new passenger aircraft. Dedicated freighters is about 1,600 today. Uh, we'll need uh, uh, about 77% more. New freighters, that's 871. So the real important number is the one at the bottom here. 29,226 new aircraft, 100 seats and above, worth at catalog prices 4.4 trillion US dollars today. This industry is 67%, almost 70% bigger than it was in terms of revenue passenger kilometers than it was only 10 years ago. Every 15 years, the industry doubles in size. Now, if you ask how we're positioned for that, we think relatively well. We're very well positioned, we think, uh, in Asia, 36% of our backlog and about 38% of the 20-year demand in Asia Pacific. So things we think are relatively well balanced for, for Airbus. So here are the big three mega markets around the world. Asia Pacific is about 29%. I can remember uh, doing these presentations uh, only five or six years ago. We talked about the three big markets in the world, the US number one, Europe number two, Asia Pacific number three. I can't even say that anymore. Now you've got the US at 25%, Europe about the same, and Asia Pacific at 29%. But look what happens in just 20 years. That trend continues, such that Asia Pacific is over a third of all RPKs, revenue passenger kilometers. Western Europe goes down to about 22%, and the mature US or North American market is down to under 20%, 18%. Look what happens in 20 years. The number one market is not the US. The number one market is internally within China. And if you look down a smaller base in terms of growth rate, the, it's 10% a year in domestic India. Not flying outside India, just flying within India. 10% a year compounded growth rate. And those shifts mean demand for new airports, demand for new aircraft, and it's driving the GDP growth in those regions as well. Basically, the story, if we sum up the numbers, 17,700 aircraft flying today. About 7,300 stay in service. These are the new ones in 20 years. Then about 10,000 are replaced. And of course, we have the growth, remember, about uh, two-thirds of the aircraft needed to get to that uh, 29,200 are required for growth. That's the story going forward. It's worth 4.4 trillion US dollars. It's a strong story because it's a story not just for Airbus and the aircraft manufacturers. It's a story for the airlines, and it's a story for the economies of the world that are all interconnected now between the manufacturer, the airline, and the GDP growth of these various emerging markets around the world. Strong growth in passenger traffic is what we're going to see. 29,000 new aircraft. Replacement of aging fleets means uh, more aircraft flying, uh, the same or greater number of people burning less fuel. From the uh, beginning of the jet age, uh, the average fuel consumption per passenger uh, kilometer has gone down by about 70%. Noise has gone down by about 75%. That's the value of the new technology, and you can imagine with our NEO, it'll be even stronger. About 70% of the units will be single all aircraft, but 60% of the value will be in wide-body aircraft. And of course, the very large aircraft demand, like the A380, is being driven by these 89 megacities, now 42, growing to 89, that will carry about 99% of all of the international traffic.